This video is all about comparing biodiesel and petrodiesel. Um, I think I'm going to break this into about three parts, but the first one is going to be looking at where this stuff initially comes from and how it is produced in basic layman's terms. So not so much chemistry as such, but basically the gist of what we, how we obtain biodiesel and how we obtain petrodiesel. Now these are both fuels and this content is important for VCE chemistry in unit three. Um, the year 12 chemistry course starts off looking at energy sources and these two here are great energy sources for making cars and trucks go. So let's have a look at biodiesel and petrodiesel in terms of their production. Firstly, let's look at biodiesel, which here I am, I'm in a field of canola. Canola is an oil, and that's where biodiesel is uh, initially comes from. Canola oil contains stuff called triglycerides, and we do some magical chemistry with those triglycerides, and we end up with methyl esters, which are what biodiesel is. Now, the most important part of this really is understanding that if biodiesel comes from oil and oil is grown, what that means is biodiesel is carbon neutral, which means it absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere when it's grown. So therefore, when we burn it and produce carbon dioxide, there's no net emissions from biodiesel. So biodiesel is a um, fuel which is carbon neutral. The other thing about biodiesel, because it's grown in crops, is it's renewable because it can be produced in a very short period of time or a relatively short period of time. So it's considered a carbon neutral, renewable energy source, which is really, really good. Petrodiesel, on the other hand, um, is not so great for the environment. One, because it takes millions and billions of years for it to be produced. Um, it's produced from crude oil, which is formed over millions of years from rotting and decaying plant material under the ground. So petrodiesel comes from crude oil, which we dig up with these rigs, um, and that's not the best for the environment. The other thing is because it's um, non-renewable, it doesn't, it takes millions of years to produce, it's non-renewable and also that carbon that we're releasing when we burn our petrodiesel, that's adding to the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. There's nothing taking it away when we use petrodiesel. The other thing about petrodiesel is you can see we're pumping it out of the ground and a lot of the time we actually pump it out from where there is water in the ocean. Um, and if we have a leaky pipe, it's not very good because it spills everywhere and it kills a whole bunch of fish. So in terms of environmental impact, biodiesel wins. So yeah, biodiesel wins out environmentally friendly overall, but there are a few negatives that you need to consider when thinking about producing biodiesel. One of the things is you need a lot, and I mean a massive amount of biodiesel if you want to run the entire world without using petrodiesel. What that means is that you need a lot of land to produce the oil that is used to make the biodiesel. So what you can imagine is all this crop that I've got here, this beautiful canola, that's normally used to go into making food um, and other things that we use to make um, biodiesel, like the truck, the oils and stuff like that, they are a good food source. But what we would need to do is take all that land that we use to grow our food and instead use that to grow fuel. And that could be a challenge, particularly in areas which perhaps don't have a lot of land or a lot of fertile land to grow crops. So land use is a problem if we wanna convert all our fossil fuels into more environmentally friendly biodiesel. The other aspect is you're going to need to use a lot of water to grow those crops as well. So that's a challenge. Um, so I also talked before about biodiesel being carbon neutral because it takes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere when you grow it and then you produce carbon dioxide when you burn it. Now, that's fair enough if you're using 100% biodiesel, but generally farms and stuff like that that produce this stuff, they're most likely going to start their life running fossil fuels and you're going to need to use some energy to run the harvesters and stuff like that. So therefore, whilst if you use biodiesel to run everything, it would be carbon neutral, generally all the other factories and all the other processes that you use 
probably have some input from carbon dioxide, um, carbon dioxide producing fuels. So therefore, it's mostly carbon neutral if you don't consider the, I guess, the machinery that is used to create it. So that's something else to consider in terms of biodiesel. The next video that I'm going to look at, or the next part of this video, will be looking at the chemistry behind producing biodiesel and the chemical reactions that occur in that production. So how we take triglycerides and convert them into biodiesel, and we'll look at the structure of that. And then later on down the track, we'll then look at um, the properties of biodiesel and petrodiesel and we'll compare the structure of the compounds and then what that actually means for how they actually work as fuels.